Hello, um, my name is Hannah Greskovich and I am going to give a paper today entitled um, Critical Reflection, Good Programming Practices in Contemporary Music. I will start just quickly by introducing myself. Um, I work as a creative producer and also as a tour and project manager in both the new music scene and the classical, and the classical music scene. Um, and I have worked with loads of different organisations across the across both worlds um, since I started working mostly as a freelancer. Um, and aside from that, I am an activist and I am active with various groups um, in Berlin, which is where I live, um, including a Polish feminist group um, and I and an international group um, linked to the left party in Germany. So my presentation today, instead of being in a discussion format, which is what I had initially planned will be more a series of short statements about my own personal reflections and thoughts on this intersection between classical, contemporary classical music and activism, diversity, and critical reflection, especially within how we program. So since moving to Germany um, about four years ago, I um, I'd completed a master's in social sciences um, with focus on globalization and post-colonial theory, and also through my activist engagement, I have been exposed to many more um, thoughts and ideas than I had been previously and which made me reflect a lot on how we treat contemporary classical music as a contemporary art form or whether we do that at all. Um, for me there are a lot of gaps um, in how contemporary classical music gets programmed and I would like to begin the conversation about how we can start to develop good programming practices in the industry. Before I introduce all my ideas, I would just like to maybe quickly cl clarify that when I talk about contemporary classical music, I am talking about composed music that comes out of the classical tradition, performed mostly by classical musicians, and I am not talking about sound art or electronic music or any of the other things that kind of um, get uh, branded as contemporary music as well. This is a very specific strand that I'm talking about which bridges this new, mu new music world and this classical music world. Another thing before I um, start talking about what it is that I mean by critical reflection and critical programming and good programming practices is that I wanted to uh, just quickly discuss what I mean by diversity and uh, how I think it's actually not gone far enough yet in the contemporary classical music scene. Um, what diversity is, of course, I have, as many of you I'm sure know, there have been a lot of, um, there's been a lot of pressure and a lot of drive to uh, towards gender parity and towards uh, more representation of people of colour, um, especially in terms of composition and uh, conducting, which are both um, areas where that is mostly or very noticeably missing. However, diversity is not just having the right numbers, it's also about having those voices actually heard. It's about allowing um, a conversation and not saying, Oh well, but we've had we have women in this um, in this concert program. So what's the problem? And why I think this is important is well, on a very basic level, is because we miss out on a lot of new ideas and a lot of new thoughts and new ways of working when we don't listen to people who have, who have had very different experiences. On a more perhaps serious level, um, many of us are certainly striving for much more representation and equality to counteract the kind of elitism, classism and misogyny that permeates the classical music scene and so actually working towards diversity and um, parity is what it, essential work actually because otherwise we're going to be stuck within um, this very outdated and um, often for many people very toxic environment. So what is it that I mean by critical thinking or critical reflection? What I mean is that whenever we put together a program, it shouldn't just be about, uh, oh, isn't it great? Let's have a concert program of works just by female composers. Oh, um, I don't know, maybe it's election time and we have uh, some works put together that are vaguely to do with politics. That's too surface level, it's too easy. But we need to engage much more critically with these issues to actually be able to achieve any sort of change and actually to for them to mean anything. So critical thinking, really, it's about going that one step further. 
I'm not saying we should go the contemporary art route where we have a 15 page manifesto to any piece of art that gets created that ends up being um, artistically uninteresting. That's not, that's not really the point. I think there is a middle way whereby we can talk about deeper issues and engage much more critically with what the composers who are writing within a certain context and with it from within or from their own experiences, um, allowing them to actually have that voice heard while putting together programs that mean something more than just does have a lovely theme that seems to work with the current zeitgeist. One example that will hopefully make it clear what I mean by critical reflection and something that I have, I have been really noticing within the contemporary music scene or certainly within the classical music scene that engages somewhat with the, class, with the contemporary um, is what I like to call anniversarism. What I mean by that is we very often see concert programs or new commissions being done on the basis of some sort of anniversary that's coming up. Um, and that's done in a very uh, surface level way of, well, it's an excuse to write a new piece and then, and then that's where it ends. For example, um, this year is the 400th anniversary of the Mayflower leaving um, British shores for the USA, or the New World, in inverted commas. Um, and I have seen examples of commissions done on this topic, which are si simply about a voyage or discovery or the US uh, or this kind of UK-US relationship. Um, this is something that I find hugely problematic because at the end of the day, the Mayflower voyage was a voyage of some white Europeans um, who were fundamentalist um, religious, uh, who were a fundamentalist religious group within the UK, so they actually initially left the UK to go to um, Holland, but they actually went to the, to the US and waged war and killed so many Native Americans. They colonized that land, they claimed it for themselves and uh, didn't really care about the consequence of that. They decided that that was that was given to them because they needed to find a new place to set up their own their own society. Um, you know, in the end, I'm, I believe they killed about 80% of the Native American population, not them specifically, but they brought over diseases. Um, so it wasn't just to do with the war, but it was to do with how they, with the, the actual transit of people. So based on this example of the Mayflower, um, doing a program simply on this idea of voyage and discovery is, in fact, extremely racist. It's just about the white man's perspective about going to to a new world and colonizing it, not really thinking about the fact that that journey had consequences on other human beings and played a part in, in strengthening and building these global hierarchies which we're still living under um, in the 21st century. So for me, what's really important here is not that I'm, I don't think that we should look towards anniversaries uh, necessarily to um, come up with concert programs or new commissions, for example, but we need to think about why we're doing this in the first place. Why is it that we want to be talking about anniversaries and using them as the center point of a program or a commission? And I think unless we have something new to say, because, um, because we're working with, a, with an artist or a composer or musicians who want to engage with this topic on a level that is much more critical, I think there's no point in doing it because actually then we're perpetuating an already existing uh, structure hierarchy in history that we're all, in fact, implicit in. Another thing that I have experienced in contemporary classical music while working in various roles across the industry is this kind of fear to ever engage in the political. Um, this word seems to create a lot of uh, tension <laughs> anytime it gets discussed and this is probably why we end up setting uh, the same Greek myths or the same 19th century poetry to music even now um, when actually there is so much more that we could be doing. I'm not saying everybody's doing this, but I'm saying there are still a lot of people doing this. For example, um, I was at a contemporary music festival in Berlin a few months ago, and I went to a concert which was um, <clears throat> all works of uh, written by female, various female composers in the last, I think, two decades. Um, to their credit, they did, they did not bill it as a women's music concert. Um, but what did strike me um, is that while reading the program notes everything there was just about the aesthetic was about just the music and how 
um, and how they're using the instruments, how they are preparing the various instruments or um, doing something unusual in the actual musicality of it, um, but nothing about the context of the works. Um, and actually until one of the composers got given a microphone and was able to talk to us about her work, did we find out that actually her, the structure of her work and the way and, and her inspiration for it came out of writing it during the inverted commas refugee crisis in Germany five years ago. Um, and she said that words such as integration, migration, tolerance and um, um, acceptance and their opposites uh, were the words that she was playing around with while writing the work. So while the, while the piece was not necessarily about the refugee crisis, it was written in that context and that's where she got her inspiration from. And for me, that's actually a very important thing to understand that composers are not writing in vacuums. Composers are still responding to things that are happening around them, to things that are in their lives at this time um, or in this, on society at large. So why are we not talking about this in the same way that other art forms are? Why are we still really focusing on the aesthetic and what is going on within the music itself? Because actually, at the end of the day, that makes it much more inaccessible um, and also much less interesting. And it makes and it forces people to write these slightly more superficial works because they because that's what's being performed and programmed rather than things that maybe actually have something more to say because they also don't get to say these things very often. And the reason I find this so problematic is that being apolitical is a political stance. Being ap apolitical effectively means that you are happy with the status quo and with things as they are. You don't have to fight for anything and there's nothing you really want to see change. There's, you don't care about listening to other perspectives that maybe some people are experiencing things very differently to yourself. And for me, this is a problem because we're not only then not hearing different perspectives and different views and experiences and not allowing them to be on the stage and being told to us through the musical medium, we're also saying that we don't want these people to be telling us their stories because they are not part of the status quo and they're criticizing something that we don't care to be criticized because we're apolitical. And that is a vicious cycle that effectively strengthens these um, classist, elitist um, and uh, racist attitudes within, well, all structures within our society, but also in music. We, we're not immune to this just because we work in the arts. As we are all currently living in this time of coronavirus and are under various stages of lockdown, I am hoping that this will um, actually lead to some more interesting programming later on. And I think this is a conversation that needs to be had now before we um, go down the pitfall of just having concert programs of works written under lockdown, because that doesn't mean anything, doesn't say anything. And this uh, crisis is actually showing us the huge inequalities within all of our societies it's exacerbating many of the inequalities that already exist. A lot of people are struggling with various things and various issues. And I think those are the things that we should be then talking about with works written under lockdown. We are, I would like to encourage programmers and also creators to engage with the issues at hand and then and not be scared to really to really talk about and use this and use the feelings and thoughts and emotions and the situation that we're in now to create work that really, that really reflects on it. I, ultimately, I'm sure many of the creators are, but they might not be talking about it in very openly because that's just not what is expected. So I'm very much hoping that we will actually use the works that are being created in this time as an indication of the things that we were going through rather than just kind of a superficial way of saying, oh, look at all this music got created during lockdown. Because I don't think that's not going to last anything and it's not actually going to add anything to anybody's lives. It's just what is, what is interesting and important is about how we actually are dealing with these things and what we are noticing about our lives and engaging with these new formats of communication and uh, what social distancing is doing to all of us, what being close quarters with people is doing to us, what the um, psychological impacts of being in a global pandemic are like and all of these things, I'm sure, are very inspiring or certainly uh, at the very least they will be floating around the musicians' and creators' minds. So I'm really hoping that this gets taken further by programmers and this is something that I would very much like to encourage is that we try to engage a bit more critically and a bit more reflectively with what it is that they're trying to say through their work.
So thank you very much for listening to my very short introduction to thinking critically and reflectively on uh, programming and working towards good programming practices. Of course, I will be very happy to hear any comments and thoughts and experiences that anybody else has had that has listened to this. And thank you very much to Juliet for um, having me and for organizing or reorganizing the entire symposium online. So um, thank you very much. And I hope that you found something useful in what I had to say. <laughs>